Hi all. I have another interesting Leela chess game to show you. Leela ID 448 against Commodo 9.42 with four cores. So this was provided by PWA128 that recommends this game on the Leela chess forums. So E4 from Leela, we have a Sicilian defense from Commodo. C3, so the Alapin variation, Alapin's variation, C3 Sicilian. D5 from Commodo, E takes. Komodo, Queen takes d5, d4, knight f6, knight f3, bishop g5, bishop g4, pardon me. Now I thought this position was okay for black if white takes on c5 here uh, because the king's like left in the center, but this is what Leela goes for. So queen takes d1, check, king takes knight c6, because it looks as though black can castle queenside and it's quite dangerous. White has grabbed that extra pawn now on the queen side though, so it's not all bad for white. Bishop e2, rook d8 check, not casting queen side, but just checking anyway. King e1, e5, b4, trying to hold on to this pawn. Knight d5, bishop d2, f6, we have knight a3, bishop e6, knight c4, bishop e7. A4, so Leela is pushing on the queen side now. Let's see, is this going to backfire? Rook d7, h4, black castles, and now h5. So there's a kind of light square grip here, as well as activation of the rook. And the problem is this e4, which is now played, this forcing move seems very awkward uh, to meet in some respects. Knight d4 is played. If knight h4, then this is really undermining uh, white's pawn chain, and this could spell a bit of trouble. This is an example continuation. Well, actually, it's not entirely bad. Uh, instead of b6, that knight d4. This this should be okay for white. An even position. So even that's not entirely bad. Knight h4. But uh, here, knight d4 was played, and we have knight takes b4. So this is a tactical shot against this not so stable knight on d4. So what was Leela's idea here? Well, she takes on e6, but then there's this check now, king d1, and she's basically lost the exchange, losing that rook for winning that bishop. So what's the importance of winning that bishop? Also, okay, the knight's keeping this rook out of d8 because otherwise uh, this might have been an issue, but the knight's holding d2 as well. There might be knight b3 though as well to put more pressure on d2. But for the moment, this is a very interesting position. And you might think, hold on, white can actually just get back the exchange here by playing knight takes f8 now. So what would you play with white in this position? Would you play knight takes f8 or would you consider something else? If I give you five seconds to pause the video here. Okay, Leela actually plays bishop g4. Yeah, she keeps this as a kind of exchange sacrifice. Very interesting decision. On knight takes f8, this position here is actually okay. It's it's a fairly even position. So this is a very interesting decision, Bishop G4. The rook goes to A8. We have Bishop F5, Knight B3. So the Knight comes back to snap that Bishop on D2. It seems White has a certain grip on the position here, a certain light square grip in particular. Rook B8, Knight takes E4. Rook d5, g4 holding that bishop like that, h6, knight f4 kicking the rook, knight e6 again, again harassing the rook, rook b1 now, knight a6, knight g3. We have a couple of knights coming off. Now, this position after c6 is interesting. It seems as though Leader is. Uh, having a big 
light square campaign from this position. If you look at leaders' moves from now on, they kind of occupy a lot of the light squares. The light square grip uh, is all already evidenced here. Uh, but have a look at this. Bishop d7, knight f5, rook d1. Okay, so f4, bishop c5, rook d5, king f8. Now the king comes in, king d3, c4. So there's a more of a restraint on that b5 square. The king comes in further on the light square, king e4. And now knight h4. We have king f7, knight g6, bishop e4, f5, bishop e1, king f3 is played, bishop c3, rook d3. And here, actually, in this position, uh, black does something you might think might think is a little odd. Black plays bishop e5, which leaves a loose pawn after knight takes. That is that that is played. If we have a look at this position instead, uh, to try and avoid that possibility, let's say bishop a1. The king could march in here. So even though the exchange down, this is very interesting for white because of that c pawn could be herded because the knight by installing itself on g6 has basically stopped this bishop e5 resource it's shut that down thus making it possible to push through with c7 so i think that was leader's point of the maneuver to g6 in retrospect uh, it wasn't just to potentially weave a mating that around the king so we have this situation now where all of a sudden like the danger is is kind of in, in this position is, is evidenced by bishop e5 it's it's a bit of a giving up move. It's a, it's a major concession that's taken, and there's this very weak pawn now on e5. And this is where, uh, if it ends up being two pawns for the exchange, then that's going to be very very dangerous compensation. So at the moment, it's six pawns against five, but this e pawn is dropping off. So two pawns for the exchange, and this is looking very pleasant for white indeed in fact white doesn't mind a pair of rooks coming off and the game ended here black's really in a lost position if for example rook c7 king d5 uh, it's a bit of a zugzwang uh, coming up so here bishop c8 would threaten to cut that rook off totally uh, for example like that that would win the pawn uh, this position is good enough with c7 crashing through. And if instead, uh, if we look at this position again uh, with bishop c8, if say king d8 not giving up a6, uh, then this is just unpleasant. There's b c7 anyway, tactically, as soon as the king moves. So crashing through with the c pawn. So basically, uh, that c pawn in the final position is, is a real killer. Uh, let's go back to the final position. So yeah, uh, Leela's exchange sacrifice, not taking on f8 is quite interesting here. And I think that was the, the main reason for this game choice in a nutshell. Uh, so there were some comments. Uh, PWA mentions, um, you know, exchange sacrifice for, for a pawn and some positional pressure. A rare example of Leela gradually outplaying Commodo in an end game. So quite an impressive win by Leela. Yes, I agree. PWA128, a very nice game. Thanks for presenting that on the forums there. So interesting stuff. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Comments, questions, likes, shares appreciated. Thanks very much.